Okay, so starting here with vectors, all right, and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to write down some vectors, a uh, couple of V and W, or actually U, V, and W, write down three vectors, and we're going to do several things to them, okay? So we're going to use, just for the, for the sake of simplicity, so we don't have to write down different examples over and over, I'm going to use the same three vectors, and we're going to do several things to these vectors. Okay, first thing to mention here, so... This I right here, and there's a reason I'm taking the time to make it bold and all of that. Does anybody know why, especially this month or this past few weeks, I wanted to make that I bold? Imaginary. Okay, well, because it's not imaginary. We're, we're going to be in the same test talking about imaginary numbers, and I'm going to write them as a regular I. So when, now just know this, though. When we're talking about vectors, there are no imaginary numbers with vectors, at least with what we're studying. So when we see an I, that's what that's talking about. All right, let's do some different things with these vectors. First of all, let's start with the, uh, we're going to do adding, subtracting, multiplying, all that kind of stuff, okay? So just some different examples here. First one, let's go, let's start kind of simple and do u plus v. All right, don't make this any more difficult than it is. All you do in order to, in order to do u plus v, you know what I do? I add the i's and I add the j's. That's exactly right. So I'll go ahead and write this out. So I take what u was, you know, the 3i plus the 2j, And I take the V. Now it was it had a, a negative there. I'll go ahead and write that. So plus negative I. <clears throat> so now it's just basically combining like terms. So here's U. That's what we said it was equal to. Here's J. I just have those in parentheses since they're negatives. Uh, but you could go ahead and drop the pluses or drop the parentheses. But basically, you just take the i's and add them up and the j's and add them up. You don't even have to show this step. And so, 3i plus negative i. What would that be? We're going to put those two together. What's 3i plus two negative? 2i. All right. And then 2j plus negative 6j. Negative 4j. All right. So, minus 4j. And that's all you do for adding them. Okay, let, yeah. Oh, so on the test, you do not have to show this step. No, you just write the answer for this stuff, yeah. No work has to be shown. Needless to say, as usual though, you know, if you mess it up and you just put the wrong answer, it's just completely counted off. Whereas if you, uh, you know, if you show your work and get it wrong, I can give you some partial credit. So up to you, I don't care. All right, so now let's do the same thing, but let's do subtraction. Okay? All right, so now U minus V. Uh, this one you might want to write down. Again, you don't have to. I'm not going to check to see that you did, but it might be helpful for you too, just so you don't mess it up, okay? And so we take exactly like it looks. We take the, the stuff that U is equal to. We take the stuff that V is equal to. And we just, you know, put a subtraction sign between them. And this is the reason this is really important, is on daily quizzes, on homework, and usually on tests for this kind of stuff, is it's this last thing right here that usually students get mixed up. Because they forget there's a minus in front of both of these things. Okay? So it's going to change the sign of both of those. All right, here we go. 3i minus negative i. Well, what's minus negative? Positive, good. So we're really saying there three i plus i. What does that give us? Four i. All right, and then two i minus, or sorry, two j minus negative six j. Eight j, because that's two i plus six j. So plus eight j, and that's all we have to do on that. Example three here. Now uh, I put w here uh, for a particular reason. Now let's do. Uh, w plus V. We'll try that. Uh, why did I put W up there? Or, I mean, why is that different from the others? Let me put it that way. doesn't have an I. Or, and so, on the test, you'll have at least one vector that either does not have an I or does not have a J. 
So let's look at W plus V. Now again, you don't have to write this step, but just so everybody can see what we're doing here. Uh, we would have W, and then we're saying plus V. So plus all this stuff. All right. Uh, remember, we always write the I part first. What's the only I up here? At negative I. So I'm just going to go ahead and write it down. There wasn't, uh, there weren't uh, two different I things to put together. And then we will just put the J stuff together. So negative 2J plus negative 6J. What would that be? Minus 8J. And that's it. Another example with putting these vectors together is I'm going to go ahead and just kind of put a couple of these things together at once. Let's do 2u, I'm sorry, 2v minus 3u. Okay, 2v minus 3u. So we can see there we've got multiplication by 2, multiplication by 3, we got subtraction. What do we need to do first of those? We're going to, yes, yeah, basically distributing. We're going to take, we're going to take the number 2, multiply it into everything here with V. We're going to take 3, multiply it into everything with U, and then we'll subtract those two things that we get. So <coughs> here we go. And as was said, now that we've got the 2 and the 3 there, we're going to distribute them. So tell me what I get on this first set. When I distribute the 2, what do I get? Negative 2i minus 12j. Okay? Now, Different students do this differently. I'll tell you what I'm personally going to do is I'm going to leave this minus sign and I'm just going to do a three times both of those. What some students do is they go ahead and do minus three times both of them and then put a plus. Whatever makes you happy. I don't really care. So I'm going to do three times it. And so what do I get on the inside? 9i. Group 1. Tristan Williams, Kyle Holliday, Cody Metz, Nathan Bernard, and... Now, next... We need to put, like we've been doing, we need to subtract these two things. So, here we go. This is a little bit tough, but we got this. Negative 2i minus 9i. What is that? Negative 11i. Thank you. Negative 11i. And then negative 12j minus 6j. Minus 18j. And we're done with that stuff anyways. Okay, next thing we want to do is uh, magnitude. So part of that is you've got to know what the little symbol means. So when you see this, it kind of looks like double absolute value bars. Uh, we'll go ahead and do one of those. Let's go with V. So magnitude of V. I don't mind giving you this uh, formula, but again, you've, you've got to know how to use it. So does anybody happen to remember what we do here? Square root of something. Uh-huh. A, it's, it's a squared plus b squared is the uh, formula. Okay, so now how do we do that? Well, we take here, it's the square root of, for v, what is a? What number is a? Negative 1. It's not negative i. Don't do the i and the j. We're not going to look at those to figure out magnitude. It's just the numbers. So there's an understood negative 1 right there. So we do negative 1 squared plus b squared, what do we put? Negative six. Negative 6 squared. Okay, so be careful here because, and this, it's a, it's, this is okay to do this, you put stuff in your calculator because you're trying to check it, but if you put negative 1 squared in your calculator and you don't use parentheses, it'll give you negative 1. But just think about it. Negative 1 times negative 1, what is it? One. It's just 1, okay? So the answer for that part right there is just 1 plus... Negative 6 times negative 6. 36. 36. So the magnitude of V is square root 37. Which, by the way, that just means if you graph the vector, how long, if you took, a, if you measured it with a ruler, and I know the ruler doesn't have square root of 37 on there, but the decimal that that's equal to, it's like six point something. Anyways, that's how long it would be. It'd be like a little over six. So that's going to be a sum where you just ask for the magnitude? Yep. Yeah. 
Okay, while we're at magnitude, and I'm going to keep this up here because we'll, we will use it for this next example. Um, I'm going to put over here to the side that the magnitude of V was the square root of 37, because we're going to use that right next here. And, and I will do this also on test. Is uh, I will ask you for the unit vector for uh, V. Unit vector for V. So this is example, I just lost. Thank you, example six, okay? So I'll ask you for the unit vector for V and part of finding out the unit vector is knowing the magnitude. So uh, just to make things a little quicker, whenever I ask you for a unit vector, you will have already found the magnitude. Okay, does anybody remember the formula for finding a unit vector? Good. It's the original vector divided by, you just divide both numbers by the magnitude of the vector, okay? So, vector V was, well, in fact, it's just this simple. You just take the two numbers that were up there and you put the uh, magnitude number in the bottom of a fraction, basically. So, it'd be that I, and then you got minus 6J right there, so I put minus 6 over square root of 37. J. So if you look at what V was, I just took the two numbers, negative 1 and negative 6, and put the magnitude that we found a moment ago, square root of 37, I just put that underneath each of those numbers. That's all you have to do to find the, find the unit vector. So if the, if that magnitude would have ended up being, let's go with, this is not what it was. Let's say that we ended up with square root of 16 for the magnitude. What would we do? We'd write 4, okay? Now, also while I'm here, let's say the magnitude came out to be, and because we're going to do this stuff on the next imaginary number stuff anyways, let's say the magnitude came out to be square root of 40. Now, I can't take the square root of 40, but something goes in 40 that I can't take the square root of. Good. So we would do this as square root of 4 times square root of 10. And what is the square root of 4? So we would write that as 2 square root of 10. Okay, last thing for uh, vectors is we did a little one little thing from the next section, and that was a dot product for vectors. And I'm going to here again use all three of the same vectors. We'll just do one example. So this will be example seven, and we'll start a new video on imaginary numbers. So example seven, let's do V dot, and actually we're going to do two examples. Let's do v dot u for starters, dot product, which means we're multiplying the vectors, kind of. Two. So to do the uh, dot product, all right, check this out. All I do is I take what's in front of i on both of them and I multiply. So I'm going to do negative one times three here. So negative one times three, and then I put plus, and I multiply the coefficients of j, the two b values. So plus negative six, not just six, but negative six. Negative six times two. All right, so negative six times two. And then I just uh, do some simplifying. So we get negative three plus negative 12, negative 15, and there's the dot product. One final thing is what do we do when it's something like v dot w? Yes. That is what we do. Group two, Sam Cervantes, John Patrick Warren, Rob Pillow. Karen. Okay, so v dot w, here we go. Um, negative one is the I value on v. What is the I value for W? Zero. Zero, okay. There's not an I value on W, so we put zero. That's right. Plus what times what? Negative six. Uh-huh. Negative six, negative two. So we get zero plus negative six times negative two, 12. So we just get 12. 